Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas, and today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge T320 server memory upgrades and how to properly load the system. For starters, the Dell PowerEdge T320 is a 5U rack mountable uh, tower, which basically means you can use this as a regular desktop if you prefer, which would make it an extremely powerful desktop, or you could actually fold these legs in right here and put this onto rails and use this as a rack mount server which is pretty cool when you think about it if you are using it as a desktop you really you really have a server as your desktop which makes it incredibly powerful which will give you great performance uh, i see a lot of gamers that use this kind of stuff because they get um, really everything that they want from a gaming perspective out of this so um, this has a uh, one cpu socket it's uh, LGA1356, and you have your choice of using an E5-1400 V1 or V2 series CPU or an E5-2400 V1 or V2 series CPU. Uh, from a RAM perspective, uh, there are two types of RAM that you can use, um, ECC registered, also known as RDIM, or load reduced memory, known as LRDIM. Uh, with ECC registered, you can go up to 192 gigabytes via 632 gigs at 1600 megahertz, or with load reduced, you can also do 192 gigabyte, but the speed is just a little bit faster, and you can do 632 gigs at 1866 megahertz. There are six DIMM slots total, and uh, just like the previous generation that this is replacing the T310, it is using um, uh, DDR3 memory. So let's go ahead and open this up, and I'll show you a little bit more about the insides, how you can uh, physically put the RAM in, and um, uh, pull the old RAM out, but before we do, first thing that you really want to do is put on ESD gear to make sure that you don't uh, damage the inside with any electrostatic discharge. So we'll grab that and we'll be right back. Now that we have our ESD gear on, we're good to open the machine. You will notice that we have flipped it to its side, folded the legs in. It's just easier to work on it this way if you want to have it standing up and work on it because um, you're using it as a desktop. That is completely fine. All right, first things first, make sure you have the latch set to unlock. If it is locked, just use a simple Phillips set and you can turn it. So open it up and pull the door right off, nice and easy. All right, when you open it up, you will notice that there is an air baffle, also known as an air shroud. This is there to uh, regulate the airflow and make sure that the uh, processor and the modules do not overheat. Uh, so this uh, is very simple, you just pull it straight up. But I will note uh, that on the uh, uh, back plane right here, there are some ICs uh, that are sticking pretty far out, so you don't want to lift it and pull back like this. You could potentially damage the board, so just pull it straight up and just be careful, go slow. Uh, it's kind of snug, even right now you see it's, it's catching. So you want to just be nice and careful and pull it straight up, okay? So once you get in, uh, you will notice that there are um, six DIMM slots and one CPU. You might ask, well, what is this over here and can I put in a second CPU? Technically you can, um, but I have never seen this machine with two CPUs in it and I'm not even 100% sure how or where you get the part to be able to uh, set up a second uh, CPU over here. So uh, that being said, we always treat it as a uh, one CPU system. Um, and there are, as we said, six DIMM slots. And within that, there are three memory channels. And each memory channel has two DIMMs per channel. The start of each channel, you will notice, has a white tab. So it goes white, black, white, black, white, black. So for instance, if you were only loading in three DIMMs, which is actually very common for this machine, uh, sometimes people do not completely load it up, and they might put in, let's say, three 32 gig modules. You would need to put it in the white, white, white slot. That way it is the proper configuration and you keep a, a nice balance of uh, across the load of each channel. If you were to do just white, black, white, that is the incorrect way and you will not get the uh, best e efficiency out of your machine, okay? And of course, we're going to load it all the way up. Just load it all the way up. Um, so I'm going to show you how to uh, unload it and how to load it. It's very simple. Uh, right now, it has uh, six two gigs, so it's a pretty weak system. It has 12 gigs, and we're going to put in um, some uh, 32 gig sticks and take it all the way up to um, 192. So first things first, when you're when you're doing it, I always say to um, make sure you put your fingers on top of the uh, modules. You don't want it to just pop up when you're clicking the tab and it will fly up. In this case, they're two gigs, so if it were to damage the module, we wouldn't be overly concerned because uh, two gigs aren't worth anything. But, uh, if, you know, you have a 16 gig module in here, you, you definitely don't want it to go flying up and damage any parts that have value, okay? 
Okay, that was nice and easy. Now we're gonna load it. And one thing I will note when you're loading it, personally I find it easier if you start on the inside as opposed to the outside. As assuming you're maximizing everything and you're putting all six slots in. If you're only putting three, then that goes against everything I just said because you're gonna use all the whites. But uh, I, if I'm putting all six, I start here just because if you start over here and then you have these five filled and you just put the last one in, it's a tight fit in between the heat sink and the last module. And again, you don't wanna damage any parts. So I just do things like that to make it easier on myself. I'll also like to note, you have a notch right here called the key. The key is uh, important because it's different from module to module. So for instance, if you had DDR2 modules and you try to load them in this machine, it physically wouldn't fit. If you had the newer DDR4 modules and you try to put them in here, it would not fit. If you had a desktop module, it would not fit. It's basically in there to prevent users from making errors, uh, which happens unfortunately all too common. Uh, but it's also important because if you um, put this in the wrong way, uh, you'll notice there's actually a, a, a notch right here in the middle. If you put this in the wrong way, you could potentially damage the module or even worse, damage the slot on the motherboard, which would then force you to buy a new motherboard or you just can't ever utilize that slot, whichever you you know prefer, which neither are, are what you want. So uh, just make sure you line it up properly uh, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. So I have everything nice and clean in there. Okay, and also you wanna hear this click right here. Hear that click? That's when you know it's fully seated. Uh, if it's not fully seated, then uh, you will run across errors, and we have that all the time where customers think a module is not working, and it's not registering, and it's actually just not properly seated. Unfortunately, it's all too common. Okay, well that was pretty simple. So you can see in a matter of you know a minute, a minute and a half, you can easily load uh, six DIMMs and take this from uh, you know 12 gigs all the way up to 192 gigs um, and the performance on this is just going to be vastly vastly superior to what it was uh, before this uh, before the upgrade so and that's one of the things that we always tell people too especially if you're utilizing this as a server uh, for let's say your business and you're using it to run your emails off of and just store simple files or maybe you're doing virtualization um, and you don't want to upgrade to the latest and the greatest that Dell just dropped and you don't want to spend you know, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on a server. Um, upgrading the RAM for you know a few hundred dollars can really be a great band-aid for your system and extend the life for several years before you do need to actually upgrade to something uh, maybe a little bit better. Um, and by the time you need to do that, the price point of of what you need to upgrade to will be a heck of a lot cheaper because the stuff that's coming out from Dell at ten, fifteen thousand, you know, today will be you know three to five thousand in three years from now. So um, it's one of those things that for a few hundred bucks you can get a, a really great band-aid. So okay, well let me show you how to put it all back together. It's pretty simple. Um, I will say when you're putting the air shroud in, it is a tight fit as you saw when we were pulling up. So just be very careful. You want to go straight down. You need to make sure you line everything up properly. got the air shroud in it's in nice and secure and then you simply just put the top back on and I will note when you're putting the top on it is helpful to do that otherwise it won't close all right well thanks again for stopping by if you need to upgrade your t320 or you have any questions feel free to reach out to sales at cloud that's sales at cloud uh, thanks again for stopping by